Hello folks and welcome to this new episode in which I played a multiplayer match against Zabazi and we are playing Polaris and this turned out to be a really long and intense battle and there's a lot of interesting things that happen during this game and I wanted to show you that and it turns out to be pretty well pretty even matched uh, also if you take a look at this map here if you take a really good look, it is really even, evenly distributed among the players. Even the ruins are almost perfectly symmetrical, except for the part that we have to get climbing. But that's not a big deal. And this is just a really interesting battle. And I'm going to show you... Let's turn... Let's turn to just our point of view because it is going to take a long time otherwise. And yeah, we are just playing Polaris. It is going to be a really long game and it is pretty interesting. So, that was a weird visual glitch. I hope you guys are enjoying the content so far. And if you do, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, of course. But let's just get right into this game. We see a lot of animals here, which is really nice because that means that I can level both of these cities with just hunting. Like I told you. Really easy to level both of these up. Actually, the third city as well. It's going to be really nice to upgrade all of these cities with the same technology. I mean, we are playing against Sabazi, we could tell. And they have the same thing as us in this case, of course. They can level up all of their cities with farming, which is really nice that we got that as well. Take a lot of workshops because, well, your economy with Polaris is one of the more important things, especially if you're going to get into a late game, which is usually the case with Polaris. Get riding because riding is really nice. We move on to that city over here, and this city over here is interesting and you'll see what happens with all of that we get forestry not the best technology but it does level up a lot of our cities i take an explorer which reveals a city as well as a ruin but nothing too spectacular and there's our opponent and um, my opponent here can kind of just get this city and i thought at this point you know, that shouldn't be a problem because I can just get uh, them off of there. But turns out they have been gathering a lot of units in terms of a navy. And there's one thing that you really have to be careful about with Polaris is your opponent getting a lot of navy units. So I have to really start fighting them to get this city over here. And it will be the center part of our conflict because this village over here this city has a lot of good tiles and it's really important to take control of it so that's what i tried to do but my opponent here thinks nah -uh, let's not do that they take a workshop apparently and i would have gotten an explorer here just to get some vision let's take a look at their perspective here See, why didn't they take an explorer here? They had no clue what they're fighting. And explorers are really important for getting a lot of good vision. So, that's a misplay on their part. I think. I get mining from that ruin, which is not too useful. I mean, it does allow me to upgrade with uh, mines. And maybe it will allow me to do some sort of plays or something. But for now, we're just doing Rider Road stuff. Rider Roads, classic strategy. Always a nice way to get into the middle game. We take another Explorer here, which doesn't turn out to be that useful because it just doesn't go the right direction, like at all. So we have still no clue what we're fighting against. They decide to break a lot of the ice, and I don't think that they know this, but a raft can actually use a dash action to break ice as well. So, 
I think that you're going to see that a lot happening in this video. Her opponent just didn't do that. And I think that that's just a misplay. A lot of times. We get resources here. And we're just kind of very behind at this point. Even though we have a good setup for the land. We can't really fight them on the water yet. Because, well, first off, we don't have a navy. And secondly, we don't have a way to freeze them. And thirdly, we don't have polarism because I didn't get ice fishing yet. A lot of things are not going the way that I usually play Polaris. So I kind of need to think my way through all of this. So I try to get a Mooney here to fight them from this angle. And that is not too spectacular, but they do is they notice that they have this one city here that's going to be very important and it is in a very central location so what they do is just get a wall there and this is going to bug me for the entirety of the game because i can't fight that with all my riders so instead i have a different kind of plan i'm going to save up a lot of my stars and we see here that there's a bomber and that bomber is really annoying because now my Mooney is dead and I'm not going to get onto this city with my ice bridge. I get ice bank and this ice bank is going to be pivotal in me trying to fight them because well I need an economy for a late game battle because this this was not going anywhere since they were not applying a lot of pressure on the land. I could do such a thing. So, one misplay on their part is not breaking a lot of ice with rafts. Second misplay, not applying a lot of pressure in the mid game. But I don't think that they had the economy to do so. Let's take a look. Yeah, we are up in terms of economy. They are also still expanding to the rest of the map. Look at this city though. Dang, that's a lot of farms. Really, really impressive, a lot of farms. But both of us don't have a lot of vision. And that is going to be really, really annoying for both of us. Because now we are just completely blindsided. And we're just going to just fumble all over the place. I think that that is one of the nice things about this game is that we're both completely clueless. And what they do very well is keep me off of my moonies because now I don't get to just waddle onto the water and they are kind of port pinning me but not with using ports but they are using ports to pin me which is really bizarre that that could actually work because usually Polaris is just stronger than that but due to the fact that they were so early on with getting onto the water they could do that really well played on their part. I get polarism here and a misplay on my part. I should have gotten the Moody over here or something because that way I would have been able to get onto this part of the map and now I couldn't. <laughs> so boohoo me. Still though it feels like we are going to get the upper hand on this section of the map. We just need to move these two ice producing units over here and with that I should be able to at least get a hold of some section of the map while they are just fiddling around with their stupid navy. Alright so finally I get some vision here. Actually a lot of it and we see that they have philosophy. Which means that they were saving their stars to do a lot of economy work as well. So we did kind of have the same plan here. Which is really annoying. Because now both of us are going to prepare for the very late game battle that's going to ensue. But one nice thing is that, as you can see, we are still sieging their city. And that city is paramount in trying to take control of this section of the map and they take a border growth in the central one 
and that central one is going to be really really hard to siege now because they have such a large amount of tiles here that they can block me with and if there were to be like a, a forest over here it would have basically been game over for this entire section of the map and even though i have all of these cities putting pressure on this one their naval support was just so strong that i couldn't siege it so that's why i decided to go around that city usually you just brute force your way through but i i couldn't so well played on their, their part now i get to do some freezing here meaning that i can finally finally try to put some pressure on them and I decide to break this ice here and I place my units in a very careful uh, thought through position in order to stop them from just beating the crap out of my units and this is where the game is going to take a very very interesting spin here because both of us are just fighting to get whatever we can all all of these cities are just such high levels at one point that and we have such crazy economies that we can fight a lot of things at the same time pick a border growth here and that's not the right play i mean it is the right play to get a border growth but not yet because now even though i can kill both of these naval units there's still too much support over there and I try to siege the city and do a lot of things at the same time. And I do have the stars for that because of that nice ice bank. But we can't do it yet because they still have too many units for me to deal with. I don't have knights. I don't have that many riders, even though it looks like it. We don't have that many. And we don't have the, the amount of ice producing units. That we could actually do that. So here I get some vision on what's going on here. Pretty nice, pretty nifty. And I start freezing a lot of their cities here so that they can't produce any units. And I have no clue what is going on over here. So that's kind of something to worry about. I do get to kill one of their bombers which is really nice. But it's not enough. Not by a long shot. They, they still have so many bombers that can just absolutely destroy everything on my eyes. But they still, they still have so many units. Despite me blocking everything. And they just have so much support from these three bombers over here that I can't really do anything against it. And once again, they start breaking a lot of ice. <laughs> and there went my aggressive plays here. But now I have another plan. Because I have been saving up a lot of stars. And that will allow me to make some interesting plays using knights. And I start freezing some uh, some other essential units on the water as well, even though it's not going to save me yet. And at this point I'm really starting to worry about them having knights, even though they didn't. Uh, it felt like they could just start getting a lot of knights. And by the way, this mindbender, love it. I absolutely love the way that they try to heal their riders with this Mindbender. Spectacular play. Well done on their part. They move in with their bombers. And I can't... I can't... I can't hit them. I just can't hit them. Really annoying that I'm, I'm really good on their part that I couldn't really do anything against it. So, kind of a... Uh, oops moment. For me, uh, I try to think through this, but I, I didn't put in all my brain power. I wanted to get a border growth on this city because that would allow me to chain through a lot of units. But they have borders here, so it 
that won't work. I can kill some of these units that are left behind, but not all of them. I get another knight, and they are pinning my city here, and I'm pinning there, so really interesting uh, to see all of this happening at the same time. Once again, they get to kill my Mooney here, and they move in with their bomber. That's going to be really essential. And I also try to unfreeze this city, but doesn't really achieve much because I can still freeze it. <laughs> finally, I get some units into a spot where I can finally uh, kill some of their bombers. That's really important here. Me taking out these bombers is going to be essential in taking control of the map. And I make a misplay here with a defense bonus uh, warrior that can't be killed in one hit. I didn't think that they had that, but I should have at least tried watching it. So, bad play on my part. Trained a lot of units once again. And they siege my city. I can unsiege, but at least it just does temper with my economy for a bit. And once again, we're just back in the stalemate. And they take a bridge to try to fend off. But I get this smart idea to just kill all of their bombers in this spot, which is really going to help out a lot. Get to kill some of their naval support units. And I do finally get to make some aggressive moves on some of these cities. Which, it was about to get time, you know? To finally do something against all of these units. Just having a lot of fun. And slowly but surely, we're trying to take control over the map. Does seem to be working and I'm finally getting some vision as well. <laughs> I'm making so many moves to try and capture this city, it just doesn't work. There's too much support from the from the nearby area. And what I do here is also break this ice because this giant was just getting too scary for me. I couldn't do anything against it yet. So I need to break the ice, which does hurt my economy a little bit, but Nothing too spectacular. Still, with the support, they can unsiege, train a new defender. And we are still in the same situation. Nothing has changed. Bizarre, bizarre game, but they train a lot of defenders. And one thing you need to know about defenders is that they can't really attack. So. They can, they can be a really good meat shield, but they can't really do anything against all of these riders, especially if they're frozen. So me just moving all of my units, trying to get some change going. Doing a lot of attacks. Basically, the rest of this game is me trying to attack and my opponent trying to defend. And something that is really important about trying to attack and defend in Polytopia is the attacker usually wins. Get population growth, I can get a Gami here next turn. What's also important is that I finally get a Mooney to a situation where I can possibly build some ice over here so that I can finally take out some of these support units. But. In the middle here, still a lot of Rider Bros action, uh, with some knights as well. And they are just flooding the board with a lot of defenders. And I'm just trying to get a chain going to get some value out of my units. And finally, finally I reach the back lines and I get some vision here. And I can see that there's no units in this city. I finally breached their defensive position for a bit, which really nice allows me to get some information about what to do with my next couple of turns. Get 
Gami going. It's only the second Gami. They've had the opportunity to get so many giants with that farming. But importantly, they don't get to kill this knight here. And that is going to be really essential in giving me the information I need in order to get a hold of the rest of the map. Because now I have vision on them that they don't have on me. I think that they easily could have beaten me if only they had known about all of these things. <laughs> so many riders. No spoilers though, but that's a lot of riders. So many kills and I'm slowly but surely whittling down all of their units and that's the nice part about Polaris if you can get yourself knights and some freeze units you can basically reduce your your city's uh, the city's amount of your opponent by a couple if not a lot they get a park don't know why but if you can freeze the most important cities of your opponent, that means you can basically reduce their amount of cities. I finally get a border growth here to get rid of the uh, broken ice. I also get a Gavi, which is going to be really nice in trying to push through a lot of units this way because now I kind of have control over this section of the map and I'm slowly trying to reduce the amount of support that they can give from these cities by just freezing them freezing units is always a good idea and I now also have the knowledge that they don't try to get knights yet which is really weird and wacky because knights are usually very good against Polaris especially the way that I play them <laughs> I play them very very weirdly basically ride the roads on steroids and now the giant factory started rolling in but giants are not a big deal. <laughs> Look at how incredibly crowded this entire board is. And it's turn 30. Turn 30. That's amazing. So we finally tried to get rid of all of these units. There's been so many things going on. And it's just, there's just no winner yet. Even though I've been on the offensive for quite a long time the, my, my opponent was playing really well trying to defend all of that I get smithery here to push out this defender in the in the city get a Gengami which will help me so it's Gami's versus Giants and I always think that Gami's are just more powerful because they can freeze a giant so that it doesn't do anything especially with proper support that is definitely the case this giant have been sitting here for like five turns or something it can't do anything but looking at the economy of my opponent here they are catching up because they have chosen to go for markets and that is just a bit on the late side. But now they are in, actually in the lead. But I don't think that this was the right play here. Because on the side of the army, we are winning. And they could have invested into their economy much earlier on. Especially since they have philosophy. Which I still don't get why. <laughs> why? Still trying to siege his city. It's just, it's just incapturable. But at least I finally get to take out a lot of the naval units once again. 
this game was dragging on and dragging on for so long but you can probably tell that there's uh it's coming to an end we are finally taking control over most of the map we have so many knights and riders that you know they can just push out my siege once again they played really well i i've got to admit they uh they were keeping me on my toes And they actually managed to squeeze out more stars than I did, which is pretty impressive considering I have an ice bank. But yeah, me taking control over this section of the map and just freezing a lot of their cities, which is going to help me in reducing their amount of units is going to be really nice and I also finally take the city here which has been sitting there for quite a long time a lot of knights will do the trick uh, they can once again plop out this giant which is annoying but it's fine I can freeze so many of their units and cities that Technically, their output is just half of what mine is. And as you can see, and after this turn they give up. Which I don't blame them. They have fought for a very long time. This game actually took over two hours, I believe. Which is really long! It was a live game, by the way. A live game shouldn't take two hours. Except maybe if, like a free-for-all or something. But... This was not a free-for-all, it was just a very long game. The way that my opponent played this game, really, really well. And I think that it was a really nice and interesting game. With a lot of interesting moments. And in the end, you can tell that in general, Polaris is just stronger in the late game. And if I hadn't gone for a ice bank, I think that I would have lost. And if my opponent had put pressure on me a bit earlier on, I think that I definitely wouldn't have had the chance to free some of their cities and try to walk around their defensive position. Because this city has a wall, this city has a wall, only this one doesn't. And I think that that is quite beautiful. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you are going to like and subscribe just like a lot of you guys are doing. Which, thank you all for so, so much for the support. It's been an amazing journey. And the Polytuber Battle Royale, just a little spoiler. I, I'm almost done editing the first section. It's going to be two parts because there's a lot of content. We did the uh, talk with all of the, uh, the contestants, so to say. And that took an hour to just to discuss this, uh, this battle that we had. It's really, really amazing. Uh, it was a lot of fun and it will be coming out pretty soon. Uh, we need to discuss uh, with all of us when we are done editing because that's taking a lot of time. But all right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed. And it's been an amazing day. See ya.